Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. And uh, to my left, or if you're on your phone to your right, we have got the one and only Phil. So hello, Phil. Hi Dan, how are you? I'm good, mate. You? Very, very good. Very good. It's a good time to be a voice fan, isn't it? And a lovely day. Right? All day long. I mean, it's the first Premier League home fixture for 23 years. How are you feeling about it? Excited, and I'm glad it's on Sunday actually, then Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. because I think with it, not not because of the fan thing, but I think it gives another day for uh, Cooper to to do a lot of things with the players in, in that in that extra day. Because when you do have a lot of new players coming into the squad, it does take a little bit of time to gel, and, and we've seen that. Um, Again, you know, when we played Newcastle, you know, you could tell, and even pre-season, I think you could tell that we're just not quite in the right mode kind of thing. But, you know, I'm really excited. I mean, it should be a really fantastic atmosphere at City Ground. Very interesting that we're playing West Ham because of Jesse Lingard and everything else like that, you know what I mean? So that's quite, that's going to be quite interesting, but... Um, I think it, it, and I'm glad it's on Sky as well because I think for the five fans who will be not lucky to get a ticket, um, we'll be able to watch us as well. And I think what is the most important thing is that the like the fans who are going, um, that we make the city ground the atmosphere really loud and. and you know, if things aren't going right, we do like what we did again at Sheffield United when we when things were going down. That was the loudest I've ever heard the city ground, and I think I gave the players a lift. So um, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, been saying it, and um, majority they were a lot of other fans that done the uh, done the preview saying that the fans need to be the 12th man on Sunday and get behind the team and. From start to finish, it's like we need to really, really support them because, I mean, just to lift them and give them that extra 20% on top of their 100% that they got already. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think with it, you know, like last season, you know, we prove it to um, good quality Premier League teams that they did not like coming to the city ground. Even Liverpool, to a degree, I think they found it very... Not a nice ground to play at, you know, with the atmosphere and everything like that. You, you know what I mean? And um, I think for us, I think it's important that we make the city ground as much of a fortress as possible. And then, well, I'm very confident that when we, you know, we 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 will be okay and we will still cause a lot of teams a lot of problems. And I think you know when the new players start gelling a bit more, um, I think we'll have a really good squad. Yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, we've seen glimpses of it last week and yeah. in certain games that when they do play football, they do play really decent football, which is quite good. Um, obviously, now they had another week together, um, it might start showing Sunday the sort of performance levels and how they need to get up to super, um, super Cooper Bowl. Yeah, I think, I think one thing what for myself, looking at Newcastle game and looking at pre-season game, where before when we had, I dare say it, like Jess Benson and then Brennan just above him, I think with the formation with Johnson playing more as a as a striker role, I think it puts a lot of pressure on both Toffolo and Williams to be a wing-back and a winger without getting caught. And I think that is one thing what, if I was an opposition manager, where we got caught again, because if they go up too much, where before when Spencer was there, either Johnson would drop back or Zinconaga would drop back a little bit. And I think that's the only thing what, I think, I think we'd be better with one centre forward and then the, them going back on the wing because that gives you a little bit more protection. Yeah. Um, then it does. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It'd be interesting to see if, um, you know, it's going to be a whole battle in in midfield, you know, because West Ham have got probably one of the best centre midfielders in the country, in Declan Rice. Um, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm really excited about the game. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, there was sad news about um, Scott McKenna being ruled out injured, and Tootsie looked like injured, in, uh, injured as well. I mean, would you keep to the back three and play Mubso or being a Kuna? You being a Kuna, or you be a play right wing back, and with Mubso, I slotted in to that centre half. Or would you go to a back four and do Nikki and Wawel? No, I think we need. I think changing to back four, I think changes all the dynamic of the squad. Mm. And I think both both Bikane and Embiso played against Southampton. Mm. And I thought Embiso looked very, very good, in very, very strong. Um and you know, no disrespect, you know, we got him from PSG and he had a really good reputation. So I think not one of them are gonna have to click in. I think Nia Carte will start growing in that in that more of the centre of the of the three role. I think he grew I think he grew really into the game against Newcastle. Um a lot yeah, he had a dodgy start or, or unsettling start, but I don't think I think it was a last minute change where I could got injured because I don't think he was expected to play. Yeah. And I think with that not expecting to play in like thinking I'm gonna come on and when you are like really chucked in at the deep end, I think that changes. But you know, I thought well, I thought during the game he, he started to go into the game and look, you know, really good. But again, like I said uh, about that game. You know, and I know that Davis is now gone to Watford or is going to Watford. I thought that we did miss a striker who could hold the ball up because Sam Sovich is not the kind of striker, unfortunately. Nor is, nor is Johnson, you know, David Johnson, um, Brendan Johnson, you know what I mean? He's not like like his dad was, like, they're quicker to run kind of thing. So, I think, I think for, for us... But then again, we're not having that kind of striker. Maybe that's why we've been forced into playing the two, you know, more the two up front. But I think we had more successes playing one up front and then the, and that busy midfield, I'd say, like last season. Um, and I think we will go back to that when we get, you know, the, the additional plays, what we're after. Mm. And that's the thing there. And I know I said it quite a lot last season, saying that, Having that different t- type of striker up front does make the difference from... I mean, Seward is goal scorer. I mean, Brennan, he got that flexibility and the pace. Um, yeah. You've only got that something about him. So having that different sort of striker up front does make that difference in how you um, play. And I think when we play Newcastle, no disrespect, I mean... They sent the defenders. Are they six 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 something like that? Six five six six. You you know, you, you, we didn't. You know, and they're a bit bullish, aren't they? You, you know what I mean? And like, and they do like. I think Sam's probably one of the best finishes up we've got at the club, mm-hmm. but I think he comes back. He, he's better as an impact substitute for us. Yeah, and I still think he's got a key part to play into in you know this season. I really do. But I do think we miss that, like what you're saying, Dan, that we do miss that kind of sturdy, you know, solid striker. But the game, like, talking about a striker, which hopefully is over the line, because if Davis is going to Watford, um, I did watch watch Watford in their games, and that Dennis looked really, really good player. Solid, strong. So, you know, I think I think the club behind the scenes and everything are working on it. One thing what I do disagree on, where I don't know who's doing the rumours, but people saying, like, Cooper's going to war, Cooper's not happy about that. I totally disagree with that. I think he is happy. Um, I don't think he's going to walk. I think he's probably already signed the contract. I'd be very surprised, at, but at the moment, priority for him is getting the getting the team, so we know what we've got to go for the for the season until January. And my my gut feeling is that I'm glad that the clubs are looking at different options for Morgan Gibbs White because I think they're holding Wolves are holding 
you know, is to ransom. But come January time, you know, or the last day, it's either going to happen on the last day because, you know, last day before the transfer, but in January, we'll have more of an option because, what, you have, what, a year and a half left? Yeah. So I think for us, it might be a waiting game, might be worth doing that mm. rather than, you know, spending 40, 50 million pounds what Wolves want. Yeah, definitely. Um, could agree more with that one, to be fair. Um, but um, what the scoreline do you think will be on um, Sunday? I think it's going to be close. I do, but I think for for the, I, I think where we've got a benefit is like, yeah, on, on Talk Sport today, they were asking about is it important to have homegrown players into your squad and does it make a difference? Mm. And I think for people like Joe Royal, Yacy, Johnson, and stuff like that, they know what it means to. Want to play for Nottingham Forest? Especially, like if you talk about Joe Roy, like what you know, he was a fan. He's been in the state in in the, in the fans watching us, and I think that moment when he goes in there, I think I th- I, I think with it as well, they are determined, and we like you know, to make sure that we get off to a good start. And I think West Ham, yes, you know, is the all good side. But I do think I think it's going to go be two one, and that's what I think. But you know, look at, looking at the Newcastle game, I think we look, even though we was under a lot of pressure, to that like wonder goal, well the wonder goal was there. I mm-hmm. think realistically, like with Henderson in the goal, he he did pull off some good saves. So I think, I think with it, with, you know. If we can get off to like three points, get that confidence going, I think that, you know, and with the fans behind us, um, I think I think 2 1, I think, to us. Oh, who do you think we score? Well, well I was going to say McKenna before he got injured. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so forget about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, It'd be nice to see Jesse get off the off the mark. Yeah. Because of the atmosphere there. But I think realistically, um I think Johnson and maybe a screamer from O'Brien. Oh nice. <laughs> yeah. I take that. I'll take that all day yeah. long. Uh, right one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to say thank you for Phil for coming on. Anytime, Dan. Right, then, guys. So, if you like the video, do like, as per usual, and do subscribe. So, I'd like to say thank you and up the reds. You reds.